This is the guitar I've just acquired second hand. I've been looking out at these for a while and managed to find one. This is the cutaway model. I'd have sort of preferred the non cutaway because it's like even more quirky in some ways. But yeah, this is a sort of quirky looking guitar. I remember seeing these way, way back. I think it must have been in the 80s when Jim Burns, UK guitar manufacturer, uh, did a prototype of this and another one called the Scorpion. They both had a similar sort of headstock, this um, sort of earwiggy sort of thing with these um, string guides here. Um, and it's got this unusual sort of sound hole arrangement. The original ones, I think, had a full brass plate, including all this with the bridge mounted directly on it. It's a little bit of a misunderstood guitar. Uh, the sound hole sort of confuses people. Um, the whole guitar is a bit weird looking. We'll have a look at this headstock in a minute. What I found interesting about this guitar, it does hark back to some of Jim Burns' early guitars, such as the Virginian, which was sort of looked like an acoustic guitar, uh, but it had got electric pickups and an electric type bridge on it really cool guitars there's a few variations i would love to get hold of one i don't know if they're any good but they were like a full size acoustic guitar and as i say i think this harks back to them um and the one thing i mean burns was always a bit weird um it was th there's curious things you know like that lettering on the scratch plate uh, a lot of the uh, logos and all this sort of stuff, and you find them on the on the neck plates, they obviously knew an engraving company local to them, and they would pantograph all these logos and, and lettering. And that was part of the style of the guitar, which was so different from people like Gibson and Fender. So here's that uh, headstock, which people either love or hate. It's set back like a fender so the, the 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 surface of the headstock is parallel to the neck uh, but it's three aside like a gibson uh, and you can see it's got these little string guides or string trees or whatever you want to call them there's some neat little things like you know the fact that it's got a maple fretboard against this really dark color white bound black dots and then a, a black nut the logo's done on this little engraved perspex thing. It's all quite different to so many other regular type guitars, and and that's why I that's why I like the appearance. Certainly, the appearance of these things, but it's the imagination to turn something out like this um, that sort of attracted me with this guitar. It's a curious guitar. You either love them or hate them. I think it's difficult to be, uh, you know, not to have much of an opinion about it. But um, just talk through what it's got. We've got a humbucker here, which you can split to single coil. It's got a trisonic single coil. You've got a master volume and then a tone for each of these pickups and a three-way selector now i've got a little bit of gain on the amp not much i don't like demonstrating guitars with loads of gain on the amp i don't think you can hear what the guitar is going to do so here we are <laughs> poke without being too shrill and treble uh, so for the, you know sort of that bluesy sort of stuff uh, got a nice bit of punch if i take the humbucking out and just use the single coil Bit more cut, 
but not as shrill as something like a, uh, a Strat. If I use the bridge pickup, sorry, if I use the, if I use the, the uh, neck pickup, it's a more mellow sound, which is great for that sort of jazz and uptown swing sort of stuff. The middle position is unusual because it puts these pickups out of phase, which is pretty cool for that sort of Nile Rogers sort of. If I take the take the coil tap out, so you've got two single coils. for that sort of funk type sound it does drop the uh, overall volume putting these uh, sort of out of phase put it into that forward pick up the single get a very nice warm Pretty versatile guitar. I wasn't sure when I got this uh, whether it was going to live up to my expectations, and I've settled in a little bit more to it. Uh, it's pretty weighty. It's not as weighty as a Les Paul. This it says that this is bass wood, which is usually quite light, but it's it's pretty heavy with it. And so I'm going to be trying this out at the upcoming. I thought probably take it on the road with me out at the Birmingham uh, Jazz Festival later this month. See how we get on with it. Because I think it can probably do the stuff that I would do on the electric, um, fairly heavy sort of... That sort of stuff. And then also range into the more, sort of, you know, warm stuff that I might play on a... On a full jazz guitar or an acoustic situation okay i hope that might have been of interest and i say some people find these a bit confusing what is it supposed to be um but um anyway thanks for dropping by thanks for watching and see you on further on down the road bye for now